Hello everybody. Juggling, eating disorder recovery, and chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Chronic fatigue syndrome makes you exercise intolerant and exhausted all the time. The more you move, especially past a certain amount depending on how sick you are and why you are sick, the sicker you will be. Post-exertional fatigue, they call it. As you all know, because I have a section on my channel, I have recovered from an eating disorder. I used to overexercise. I cannot overexercise now. I also used to eat terribly. Um, primarily, I was bulimic. Um, and I emotionally ate comfort food. Uh, comfort food is often sugar and when we're tired and when we're exhausted we're reaching for sugar often uh, in a video I'll link to below I talked about the microbiome um, it said that our gut is our second brain we are more parasite bacteria I mean than uh, we are human cells uh, most of it is in our gut and our gut produces 80% of our serotonin. Uh, serotonin and dopamine are important in uh, these conditions. So having a healthy digestive system, proper nutrition, nutrition for energy, and proper flora and fauna in your intestine is really important. Uh, so eating crap food is going to make you your condition worse. Also, reaching for sugar spikes your insulin and then drops your insulin. It makes you moody and fatigued and it feels like it's a boost for a half a second and then it makes you feel worse later. Also, bad food, um, frequently, too frequently destroys the flora and fauna in your microbiome and it, um, reduces the serotonin into your brain and uh, the cascade of important chemicals because I have a genetic condition that messes up my mitochondria producing what's needed to make ATP which is energy for the cells uh, it messes with that too so having an appropriate really healthy 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 diet um, nutritious diet is really really important. Now, I'm blessed in a way because of having had the eating disorder. As much as it makes inclinations on desperate moments when I'm extremely fatigued and, and I'm not gonna lie and say that I haven't given in to cramming down some candy <laughs> and chocolates trying to give myself some artificial energy um, through to get through work or other times but I try my best not to and not to emotional eat and not to do these things but I have a benefit because of the, the history of my eating disorder I uh, like many people who have had an eating disorder have a ridiculous litany of dietary knowledge um, about food <laughs> and nutrition and what is good and bad to be eating. Um, the science on all of this changes constantly, of course, uh, but by and large, I know what's healthy and what's not. I also am seeing, though I won't see her again because she was the one that had the negative practitioner commentary that I have in my playlist uh, about diet and nutrition uh, for what is appropriate nutrition for a person to be getting and especially for me in particular to be getting in a day um, but I have that to go on a lot of people don't have a long history of fascination obsession because it was an eating disorder obsession with nutrition so they don't know where to start so enlisting the help of a nutritionist can be really helpful uh, if
if you're diagnosed with this and you want to try and get your diet on point, but having your diet on point is more critical than for the average person. And because I've had an eating disorder that re involved comfort eating and binging on cakes and sugar and donuts and sweets, uh, I really have to keep myself in check. Uh, emotional eating, even though uh, living with these conditions brings up feelings of depression and hopelessness and being trapped and other negative feelings. And uh, besides the fatigue, it brings up emotional feelings of struggle that I didn't have to live with before that I want to cope with food um, because that was my previous coping mechanism. But I know better because I want to, I don't want to be I'm thinking long term, long game versus immediate. The immediate comfort 98% of the time wins. Uh, long term over short term. Occasionally, like I said, I have been, I have scarfed down some chocolate in, in quiet, sad desperation, trying to boost my energy. And it lasts for a minute and then leaves you feeling terrible physically, um, not for eating disorder reasons. Uh, it um, not having a, a healthy a healthy diet will make me in the long run feel more physically ill than I feel now and I can't bear the thought of feeling a, an iota worse than I feel on a daily basis um, also a blessing from the eating disorder is that I was already thin I was thin for the wrong reasons, but I was already thin. And maintaining weight management with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia is extremely difficult. Um, as I said, it uh, makes you, chronic fatigue syndrome makes you exercise intolerant. If you do too much physical activity, even mental exertion, you get physically sick, could be two to three days later, um, in bed incapacitatedly sick. Um, I've, the last five days, I've slept 11 hours a night. Um, I've fallen asleep at four o'clock. Fortunately, we've been off work for some time now, so I've, I've lucked out there. But uh, I, I couldn't work my shift right now. Um, I'm falling asleep at 4 p.m. <laughs> and not waking up till the next day. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but a lot of women who end up with fibromyalgia, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, fibromyalgia have early onset menopause. And this reduces their access to hormones. And that's part of what's going on, causing the, the pain, sense, the hyper pain sensitivity, etc. Uh, um, so there's hormonal fluctuations involved. And that comes with all the stuff that menopause comes with. Um, also, the more weight that you have on you, the more pressure on your joints and ligaments and muscles. The more weight that you have, the more pain you're going to be in. And because you are exercise intolerant, if you have both chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, you, your capacity, my capacity, I used to, I used to walk up to 17 miles a day in my eating disorder days. Now, I, I struggle, <laughs> I struggle sometimes to, to motivate myself to do my own dishes. Um, it's a completely different world, but because of that physical constitution I already had because of the eating disorder, um, as far as my weight alone, I don't have extra pressure and pain on my joints and ligaments that I would if I were bigger. The downside of that is I'm starting at an overall less healthy degree because my weight on the outside may be smaller 
and so I'm not putting as much pressure and pain on my joints and ligaments, but I'm not in as good physical condition because of the damage I was doing to my body through the way that I was mistreating my body prior to getting sick. I only had a small window of nearing full eating disorder recovery of a lifelong eating disorder, almost lifelong. Like I started when I was an infant, but um, by middle school, um, I had already was active into it. So years, years and years, 20 plus years um, of disordered eating. So my insides are not as healthy <laughs> just because I'm physically thinner than the average um, person maybe who winds up with this condition um, so I don't have the extra pain on my joints and stuff that I'm not starting out at the best f physical condition because I mistreated myself in order to be at the weight that I was at. Um, weight maintenance. It's easy, really easy to put on weight when you have chronic fatigue and when you have chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, you have the exercise, physical exertion, reaction, and then on top of that, you, you, uh, the intolerance, and then on top of that, you have pain. So when you're in pain and you get sick from exercise rather than feeling invigorated or better, you get post-exertional fatigue. If you do too much, you get sick. That it's really hard. You're when you the 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 saying goes: if you want to lose weight, move more, eat less. So obviously, if you want to gain weight, move less, <laughs> eat more, or even eat the same. When your capacity to move dramatically reduces which it inevitably does through no fault of your own this is not you being lazy you are ill your weight easily goes up and up and that is all the more reason why it is very critical to have a highly nutritious diet is because you will be more likely to be able to keep weight maintenance and the less extra weight you put on, the less pain you're gonna be in. And so I try to get up and move as much as possible and that's another one of those positive aspects of having had the eating disorder is that um, that little demon in me uh, still screams sometimes and I don't want to be getting to a certain degree of physical weight. I'm still very resistant to that. I'm resistant to that concept and um, everything in me wants to fight weight gain um, even though my body is resistant to moving so I'm very, very, very attentive to my diet, but I'm trying to be attentive in an appropriate way, which is a careful balance because I don't want to include restriction. I eat a lot of times a day and I eat very healthy food. Um, I snack all day long and it's as much as humanly possible. It's very healthy food. Um, blueberries and oatmeal, bananas, yogurt, cottage cheese, chicken breast, uh, veggies and hummus, and protein bars, and nuts and seeds, and uh, kimchi, which if you've never heard of it is fermented cabbage. <laughs> it's spicy and good and filled with good bacteria. I also take a probiotic and a protein energy drink thing from my doctor because my protein levels were low uh, among a bunch of other nutritional supplementation. Um, and 
I do my best. Oh, and um, lots of potassium foods like sweet potato and banana uh, because lack of potassium can make your muscles sore too. Um, so I, I do my best not to restrict. I do my best not to binge. I do my best not to enact eating disorder behaviors in my diet. But I am obsessionally healthy in my eating because I don't want to gain weight because I cannot move as much. And that same drive that used to make me walk 17 miles a day plus my job um, I can't physically cannot do it but I do have the pedometer and I can pace I may need to take a lot of breaks but that that willpower um, to pace 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 my whole life is pacing Oh my gosh, I feel like I have a weird medical eating disorder now because I have to be so anal retentive about my diet and what I'm eating, uh, my clean eating, and in order to maintain my muscle mass <coughs> and my physical condition and endurance to any degree, I have to keep up the basic amount of physical activity for a day. So I try to aim for six to 10,000 steps a day. Um, sometimes I don't make it, like I haven't been making it lately because I've been passing out or I'm incapacitated and in bed for days. But I try very, very, very hard through willpower to get up and pace and pace and pace and pace and pace and pace. I don't take walks really anymore um, because I don't want to go that far from home and run out of steam and not be able to make it back. <laughs> um, so I just pace around the house a lot, a lot. And to, to be in a position where you're recovered from an eating disorder and yet you're forced to, for health reasons, focus on weight management focus on exercise to the absolute limit of your own capacity, but none further, none further, just within your energy bar, uh, limit of your capacity, uh, and make yourself do it, um, every day, every day, every day, and what you eat every day, every day, every day. Like I said, I feel like I'm in some weird, bizarre land of having a medical eating disorder. Um, I don't really know what else to say than that, that I, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because I have some familiarity with this. I have some familiarity from having the eating disorder with forcing myself to exercise when I'm broken and exhausted with forcing myself to eat in a certain way and do it every day to be obsessional about my diet and exercise. And yet I worked so hard to recover in part so I wouldn't have to focus on my diet, exercise and weight management <laughs> so I could be free from those kind of thoughts. And I also have to be very, very careful not to slip backward because of fear of gaining weight because of my conditions should I begin to creep up the scale of beginning to restrict my diet and, and doing myself more damage than I do good. I have to be very protective of my health and of myself um, now that I'm in this state. So it's a very confusing world. Um, have found myself in these conditions where I'm medically advised to watch my weight, um, move my body, and be very attentive of my eating, where I'm also psychiatrically trying to not 
be ever vigilant of my weight, my exercise, and my eating. I don't quite know where to tie this video up. It's 20 minutes. It's long. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know uh, how confusing this is for me. <laughs> uh, but sometimes um, you can use some of your worst past mistakes and find some values and lessons in them and use them for good rather than bad. I could use this as an excuse to restrict my eating. I could use this as an excuse. Um, instead, um, I'm using it as all the more reason to fully recover, uh, even if my life still has to revolve for new reasons around what I eat, what I weigh, and how much I do or do not do in a day. Oh, the irony. If only I had never started to begin with, I wouldn't have had to spend my entire life doing this. Now I have conditions that I have to spend my entire life doing this. I consider it preparatory work. Stupid preparatory work, but preparatory work. It's the best way I can spin it. All right, guys, I'm done. Love you. Peace.